So my first guest is Dr. Shadi El Magrabi from Cairo, Egypt. Shadi is a hair transplant surgeon. He is a fellow member of the ISHRS, certified by the ABHRS, and currently serves on the board of governors of the ISHRS. Shadi, what made you want to get involved uh, in doing a repair case for the World Hair Transplant Repair Day? Okay, hi, hi, Bob. Um, actually, uh, I practice in Cairo. So in the, in the Middle East, we uh, have a lot of patients that come from uh, the black market, the, the had surgeries in the black market. So actually, I do like repair surgeries in, on a regular basis. Like every week, I have like two or three repair surgeries. So I've seen almost all the complications and the problem is some cases we cannot, uh, we cannot repair. It's, it cannot be repaired. We just refer them to SMP, but many others we, we can help them. And, uh, like the patient, the, the, the victim that I will uh, show today, uh, he had two surgeries, uh, at a black market clinic. The first one he got like, uh, almost no growth uh, and the second he went to the same clinic to do like a repair surgeries there uh, he had like very very poor growth they told him that in the in two surgeries he transplanted almost 6,000 grafts mm -hmm. but uh, as you can see he have like uh, only uh, two to three hundred uh, grafts growing so uh, it was a very challenging case uh, his donor area was very thin and they over harvested his donor. So the challenge here, we have like very little donor area now and we, we, we need to, uh, to, to transplant the frontal area and the forelock to give him uh, a good uh, result. And you know, the, 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 the problem, the big problem uh, or challenge in, in, uh, in the repair surgeries is during the first uh, surgery, uh, when they over harvest, they, they almost take all the, the big grafts, the good and thick hair grafts. And what's remaining is almost like a s single and few double grafts and with uh, thin caliber. Let's make uh, the case very challenging and our mission very hard. Yeah, they take all the best grafts and if they don't grow, they're never coming back. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a significant challenge. Yeah. And if you were to do repair cases for an a complimentary basis all the time you, that's all you would do yeah. every day you see patients probably more than any other doctor in the world yeah. uh, of terrible terrible cases of victims as appropriate word of the black market so yeah. it's wonderful that you're participating and you've done a great job helping this patient so uh, yeah thank you thank you Bob. thank you thank you very much now i'm speaking with dr rana irfan from islamabad pakistan and uh, Rana is a fellow member of the ISHRS, certified by the ABHRS, and serves currently as the treasurer of the ABHRS. Thank you, Rana, for agreeing to talk, and, uh, and what made you interested in helping a damaged patient, a victim of the black market for the World Hair Transplant Repair Day? Thank you very much, Bob. Actually, this is a problem uh, in the whole world, not only in, the, in Islamabad, Pakistan. But as we are a little bit more fame, like in the city and people, because we've been working for last uh, 20 years and people, they do come to us for second consultation. But I usually say them that you should be going to different doctors before going for hair treatment, because this is not a joke. When you get ruined by any uh, non-doctor or technician, then you come to the consultants and they cannot do anything for you. Problem is this, because uh, donor area is ruined in most of the cases and you don't see any graphs on the scalp. And uh, when I ask them, uh, did you go to back to the uh, same technician who has been uh, doing this uh, activity with you, then they're gonna say that they say to us when, I, when we go back, that your skin is not accepting the same tissue and this, this, this. So many issues. So, uh, but uh, we are there to help them out. And in most of the cases, we do help them out in like uh, unnatural looks or, but, uh, but we see if the donor area is sports something. You, you see 
so many graphs are in the in this uh, balding area like in the frontal mid scalp and the vertex uh, we see more than 30000 graphs and if donor area is having only uh, capacity of uh, uh, 2000 and 1800 graphs how can we do like compensate those graphs who've been wasted by a non technician so uh, my advice to those patients uh, is always the same that before going for hair transplant consultation go for a search on google at least and find some good doctors in your premises and precinct of you and uh, you should be going to uh, consult uh, more than five doctors i would say uh, so that you can you can find a good doctor for you. They always seem to find us too late. You know, yes. they, find, they have no trouble finding us after yes. they've been damaged. Yes, but hopefully they find us beforehand, and then yes. they're not losing those yes. graphs. Tell us about the patient that you're going to correct. Yes, that that particular patient, he lives in Germany, and he came to me, and he was done if, uh, in first case from a Turkish clinic, and he well remembers uh, the clinic and he said to me i went over there three years before and uh, uh, very honestly his donor area was totally ruined and you you don't see uh, uh, more than 200 300 grafts in the recipient area uh, but i i was having no option other than going for a step surgery i did to him a step surgery and found only 1700 grafts from a long step and uh, did something to him but he is he is uh, he cannot be satisfied with those 1700 graph but he is a little bit cool uh, after that well, you did you did the best you can do and i'm yes. sure the patient is incredibly grateful for yes. the repair work yes. again the, the yes. idea the hope is that this sort of message can get out there so people stop before yes. they go into the hands of a bad surgeon yes. who's then you know, like it's been said before they blame the lack of growth on on the patient instead of on what they did or the black market process of having the wrong people plan. Absolutely. So the society and the world is very, very fortunate to have surgeons like yourself willing to donate time and expertise to fix these problems. Thank you so very much. And we are with ISHRS in this cause because this helps the poor, I would say poor people, because uh, uh, once they are ruined, they are called poor. So I, uh, I'm, I'm always with them and I, uh, send message to uh, keep sending message on YouTube to them that even then come to us for some sort of help to them. We are there always. Thank you, Rana. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now I'm talking with Dr. Humayun Maman, another doctor from Islamabad, Pakistan, who's donating his time and expertise as part of the World Hair Transplant Repair Day. Dr. Maman is a plastic surgeon and hair transplant specialist. He's a fellow of the ISHRS and a certified doctor by the ABHRS. And uh, tell me why you've chosen to become part, part to participate in the World Hair Transplant Repair Day. Well, thank you, uh, Bob, for um, having me here. Well, one of the reason is that you see, being a hair restorative surgeon, it is very important for me to make sure that the reputation of hair restoration does not go down. So if I see anything which has not been done correctly or where there has been some problems by one of our colleagues, maybe whoever who has done that thing, I feel as an obligation that, look, I need to do justice with the procedure because there are a lot of people who have come into the market not because of the love of the procedure or the passion for the uh, for the speciality, but for the lust of the money. So, of course, they would do certain wrong things. So, as a good human, if I see some garbage being spilt over there, it's my duty to pick that thing up and put it in the bin where it should be, rather than just walking through that thing. So, that's the idea behind why I joined this sort of hair repair day. Well stated, and I could not agree more. Tell us about the patient that you're going to repair. This patient of mine, like any other, had a hairline drawn badly and he wanted to have more. So what I did was, I did two things. Number one, 
do a harvest from the bag and fill up the bag and also recycle from there so that at least he should look like a person who is sitting there without somebody's eyes catching his hairline you see because if you are talking to me and not you are you are not looking into my eyes or not looking to my uh, lips that means something is wrong with my face so by default a human being when i'm talking to so you would either try to see my eyes or you would see my lips if let's suppose my nose is too big you will concentrate on my nose or if i have got something over there you will keep on looking up over there so that is where these patients now aesthetic patients are more of the people who are conscious of their looks and if you damage that further you can't do bigger damage to that person's um self esteem and confidence definitely and i think you brought up something interesting because some of our previous guests talked about one type of black market disasters where the grafts don't grow a different kind is when they've been placed poorly so at least in your case perhaps they they have grafts placed poorly you can recycle them you can take them out and move them around which is at least better than if they didn't grow at all the grafts are just gone yes and so you know, hopefully in your case you'll be able to redistribute those grafts and make a patient look better and then they feel better about their lives well that's very true because you see um as i said um the hair transplant surgery is about you knowing what you are doing so if you do not know how much to harvest you can over harvest if you do not know how to plan you will plan badly if you do not know how to handle the grafts you will have a poor growth so all those things will that but yes when it's a poor growth then you have lost whatever you spend but luckily for my patient he had grafts over there so at least i could recycle them but that is you know that's also a black market in my opinion even a surgeon can be a part of the black market 